Praise be Jesus Christ. Uh, as we live in this time in church history, it's important that we draw close to Jesus Christ. And we hear the voice of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, in John's Gospel saying, do whatever he tells you to do. Now, we also know that the greatest way to insult someone is to insult their mother. When you insult their mother, you insult the one they love the most. You also, in a way, insult their origin. And today we look at the five great sins, the five great offenses against the mother of Jesus, against the pure Theotokos. We receive these from Sister Lucia. She says there's five grave offenses against the Blessed Virgin Mary, and therefore there is the devotion of the first five Saturdays. Many of us are familiar with the devotion of the first Fridays, but there's also a devotion of the first five Saturdays. That is, attending Mass and going to confession, praying for the intendant of the Pope on five consecutive first Saturdays. And we do this in reparation for these sins. Reparation is doing an act of uh, apology, an act of penance for sins, for crime. It's like if you offended someone deeply and you say, I'm really sorry. And you don't just say, I'm sorry. You therefore do something nice or you do something to show that you truly are sorrowful for what you've done against them. So today we're going to look at these five great offenses and then look at reasons why we as disciples of Christ, we as Catholics, should begin to promote and foster and practice the devotion of the first Saturday. So I'll put up on the screen here on my right side. Uh, these are the five sins that Sister Lucia, one of the three seers, one of the three children at Fatima, said are the great outrages or offenses against Our Lady. Now, the first one, blasphemies against her Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is the dogma that Our Lady, from the very first moment of her conception, that she was redeemed. She did not have even one moment of original sin. Yes, she was saved. She says in the Magnificat, God, my Savior. She, she was saved, but she was a saved in a way that was unique to her. She was saved in the very first moment of her existence so that the stain of original sin, the deprivation of sanctifying grace, the deprivation of justice, righteousness, that never happened to her. So she was filled with the Holy Spirit at the very first moment of her conception, her existence as a person. Now, the Protestants generally reject this. They mock it. They make fun of it. Uh, some even attribute sin, venial or mortal, to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Others go even further and say that uh, she, she was a sinner or that she was not chaste. All of these things are insulting to Our Lady. And so the first Saturday, the first first Saturday, is devoted to reparation against this blasphemy, blasphemy against the sinlessness of the Theotokos. The second one is listed as blasphemies against her perpetual virginity. The Catholic Church teaches that Our Lady is a factual and biological virgin before, during, and after the birth of Christ. Before, during, and after the birth of Christ. This means that anatomically, she was not damaged or hurt by being pregnant with Christ and birthing him before, during, and afterward. This is why Many of the great saints, this is the tradition of the church, that we say that our lady gave birth to Christ without labor pains. This is even in the ecumenical councils. This is something that you must believe as a Catholic. Our lady did not have birth pains when she gave birth to Christ because he's the new Adam and she is the new Eve. She also doesn't have original sin. It's also offensive to pious ears to think that our Lord in his incarnation would hurt or destroy or break up 
the body of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this is why Catholics have always believed this. There's also the tradition that our Lord, when he was born, he passed from her womb like light through glass. He passed through, through her womb like light through glass. So his birth in itself was miracul miraculous and it was mysterious. If you're not so sure about this, you've never heard this before, I'd encourage you to to go to my blog, taylormarshall.com, and just search painless birth or light through glass, birth of Jesus, any of those terms, and you'll find some articles with church fathers, council documents, pope sayings, etc. Now, the third one is listed as blasphemies against her divine maternity, and at the same time, the refusal to recognize her as the mother of mankind. So two things going on here. The first, that she is the mother of God. She is Theotokos. This does not mean that Mary is somehow this primordial mother goddess who gives birth to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who gives birth primordially to the divine essence. That's not at all what we mean when we say that Mary is mother of God, uh, Dei Genatrix, Theotokos, any of this liturgical and dogmatic language. What we mean is, is that Mary gave birth to a person. Mothers, your mother, didn't give birth to a human nature. She gave birth to a person, not a nature, a person. And Mary gave birth to the second person of the Trinity. We aren't Nestorians. We don't believe that there's a human uh, person, Jesus, and a divine person, Jesus. We believe that there's only one person, Christ is united. He is a divine person with a divine nature from eternity who, from the womb of the Virgin Mary, assumed a human nature. This is the language that Pope Leo the Great uses. This is uh, ratified by the Council of Ephesus, the Council of Chalcedon. This is the way we speak about the incarnation of Christ. Since Christ is a divine person, second person in Trinity, Mary gave birth to a divine person. Mary gave birth to the second person in Trinity. She gave birth to a divine person. And so we can say, truly, Mary is the mother of God in history. She's not the primordial goddess who somehow gives birth to the divine persons. In time, in space-time history, she is the mother of the second person of the Trinity, God the Son. She is the mother of God the Son, therefore she is the mother of God. As we say in Greek, Theotokos, the God-bearer. She bears God in her womb. That's why we celebrate her. She had God in her womb. No other woman can say such a thing. And then also, this extends to her being the mother of all mankind. Think about it. Adam and Eve are the father and mother of all mankind. But in Christ... All of us, through faith, hope, and charity, have access to sanctifying grace. This makes Christ the new Adam. As Paul explains in Romans, all of us fell in Adam. All of us can be justified and raised up, resurrected in Christ Jesus our Lord. We also know from St. Irenaeus and other church fathers that Our Lady is the new Eve. She sets up this blessed fruit of her womb, not the fruit that led us into sin and death, but the fruit that we eat in the Eucharist, Christ. So she is the new Eve. This makes her the mother of the new humanity in Christ. We are renewed in Christ. We are a, a royal nation. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And that happens because Mary provides the human nature to Christ. Christ assumes a human nature from her. He's consubstantial with the Father, but he's also consubstantial with his mother. And through that union with human nature, we can be united with him. And as we read in 2 Peter, we, through the human nature of Christ, become partakers of the divine nature of Christ. This is a great mystery. So this is why we can see that Mary is both the mother of God and she is truly our mother. We call her mother. Just as we can call God Father because of Christ, 
we can call Mary mother because of Christ. All right, now number four is listed as the blasphemies of those who seek openly to foster in the hearts of children indifference or contempt and even hatred for this Immaculate Mother. So these are people who focus on little ones, children, and they try to do three things. Number one, indifference towards Mary. That means who cares? No big deal. It's all about Jesus, not about Mary. Don't focus on Mary. It's not about her. It's about Jesus. So forget Mary. She's just another person, just like any of us. That's not right. That's not right. Pretty sure the angel came to her saying, hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. It's kind of a big deal. Uh, when the law says, honor your father and mother, Jesus perfectly honored his father, and he perfectly honored his mother. Therefore, we should honor her. Can't be indifferent towards her. Second thing is, is uh, contempt. We see this happening in certain kinds of parades and public demonstrations where they defile images of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is contempt. And then third, they even teach children hatred for the Immaculate Mother. Uh, we see this, uh, this brings us to number five, but we also see this in, in Mohammedan countries where they'll go into churches, or even in, we've seen this in South American places, they'll go into churches, take statues of the Virgin Mary and shatter them on the streets and deface them. This also happened during the Spanish Revolution. So these three things, especially targeted towards children, which is indifference towards Mary, contempt of Mary, and hatred of Mary, are blasphemies that require reparation. And then the fifth one is listed as offenses of those who directly outrage her in her holy images, which is kind of what I just mentioned. This is where people defile icons uh, and destroy statues and images. But we're also seeing it in our own time. Uh, we're seeing people in the LMNOP, LGBT communities who are taking traditional imagery of the Blessed Virgin Mary and perverting it in sexual ways or adding uh, rainbow features or changing the text, uh, depicting her um, in inappropriate clothing, uh, lingerie, all kinds of horrible things that people are doing um, not only to destroy valid images of Our Lady, but then to take Our Lady and depict her in a way that is disgusting, revolting, and blasphemous. So these are five out, outrageous sins against Christ. Yes, they're focused on Our Lady, but let's go through them real quick. Number one, if you deny the Immaculate Conception, you're saying Christ didn't honor his mother perfectly. She was just a sinner. Christ came into the world through a corrupt vessel that was submitted to Satan. That's against Christ. Number two, perpetual virginity. If, if you attack the virginity of Our Lady, you're attacking the dignity and the person of Christ as the Son of God. Number three, if you divine, deny the divine maternity, you're denying that Christ is divine. You're an Arian. Number four, if you teach children not to to love her, but instead to have contempt for her, you're offending Christ because Christ loves her. He's devoted to her. He honors her, as we read in the fourth commandment. And then five, if you destroy images of the mother, that's like walking up to someone and ripping up a picture of their mother or spitting on a picture of their mother or depicting someone's mother as, as um, uh, immoral or sexually immoral, highly offensive to Christ. So as we learn, all things in Mariology, that's the study of Mary, relate back to all things in Christology. Everything in, in we study about Mary ultimately points us back to Christ. So any offense against Our Lady is ultimately a magnified offense against Christ. So those are the offenses against Our Lady. And because of this, Lucia says, there is a call for five first Saturdays devoted to Our Lady. Saturday is always the day of Our Lady. She is the one who kept faith, hope, and charity alive on Holy Saturday when everyone doubted after Christ had been crucified, before Christ had risen 
Our Lady was the true believer without sin, and she had faith, she had hope, she had love. She knew that Christ would rise again. She kept the burning ember of faith alive on planet Earth during that dark time. So this is why Saturdays are always given to Our Lady. We also know from Carmelite tradition that Our Lady descends on Saturdays into purgatory, into the realm of the dead, to lift them up into the beatific vision through the power of Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, of course. But this is also her goal uh, for her children. So first five Saturdays, get on them. It's, it's difficult to do, you know, with with children and schedules and travel and illness, uh, it is difficult to get the first Fridays and it is difficult to get the first Saturdays. Uh, my advice would be um, is to just get to them when you can. You know, if you if you do four in a row and then your children get sick or you're traveling or you're you're not in a place you can get to mass, you did four. That's great. And then next month, start over again, and eventually you get it. But even if you can't get, always get them in a row. I think our Lord and our Lady look down on you and, and they're grateful. They see you as making reparation. They see you as in love with God and your heart is inflamed with charity and conversion and penance and reparation. And that's a good thing. So add to doing your five decades of the rosary every day. Say, you know what? I'm going to be one who puts on my, my day planner, puts it into my calendar first Saturdays. And I'm going to try to make it to every first Saturday. As, you know, depending on the circumstances, that's what I'm going to try to do. It's a good goal, and it shows a good intention and a good will. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for, for watching. And uh, please like this video if you've enjoyed it. And please uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Of course, you can listen to all of these on the podcast as well. So you can listen to Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you like. Just search Taylor Marshall and you'll find it there. And then also, um, speaking of reparation and speaking of need of Our Lady in this time period, I'll be leading a pilgrimage this summer with Father Hallwell. It's a Latin mass pilgrimage. We'll be starting in Fatima in Portugal. We'll move all the way across Spain and we'll end up in Lords. And the whole thing will be dedicated to the rosary and learning about Our Lady and Mariology. So if you'd like to join us on a Latin Mass pilgrimage, uh, please uh, check it out at pilgrimages.com forward slash Taylor Marshall. Sign up, reserve your spot. We're running out of space. It's filled, almost full. And I uh, would love to, to spend time with you in, in Portugal, in Spain, and in France going to these great Marian shrines and sites for apparitions. Uh, till then, God bless you and pray that rosary every day. We'll see you in videos to come. Godspeed. I'd like to invite you to a Latin mass pilgrimage. It's dedicated to Our Lady, in particular to the Holy Rosary. You hear me all the time on YouTube saying, pray the rosary daily. And so in 2020, we're going to go to Our Lady of Fatima, where she came down in 1917 and told us to pray the rosary daily. Like I said, this is a Latin mass pilgrimage. This is not a vacation. This is not a holiday. It's a holy day. We're going to have teaching every day from myself and Father John Hallwell. We'll have the Latin mass every day, morning prayer, of course, the rosary, confessions, everything. This is to draw close to Jesus through Mary. This past year, we were in the Holy Land at the Holy Sepulchre at Golgotha, Latin mass pilgrimage of Father Hallwell. Father Hallwell is joining us again this time in Portugal, Spain, and France. Fatima to Lord. It's going to be an amazing pilgrimage. Lots of great people. I encourage you to go ahead and look at the information page. We can fly you in from anywhere into the world. The team at 206 has great rates, great reservations. It's an amazing pilgrimage. It's great for couples, for families, for children, for grandparents, Everyone, last time we had a great range group and a wonderful community that came together as we toured around and grew closer in Christ. This year, it will be focused on Our Lady and the Rosary. So I'd encourage you to go to the website. It's pilgrimages.com forward slash Taylor Marshall, pilgrimages.com forward slash Taylor Marshall. You can see the dates uh, in June of 2020. You can see the itinerary of everywhere we're going in Spain. 
and you can learn more. So please check out the link. Uh, the link will be below this video uh, as well. So check it out. If you're interested, reserve your spot and I'll see you in Fatima ready to go. Bring your beads, bring your prayer books, bring your missiles. It'll be a experience and a pilgrimage that you will never forget. Pray the rosary daily. Come with us and pray it in Fatima, in Spain, and in Lourdes. God bless.